Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy Wayne and today I'll be going over the Samsung Galaxy A15 for beginners part two. There was a lot of great feedback from the first video so we are back with a part two to share more beginner tips to help you with learning the phone. Make sure to watch the video all the way through and if you have more topics you'd like me to cover drop in the comment section down below. I'll gather them up and I'll make a part three around just your comments. All right. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I want to go over in the video is how to save a phone number to your contacts. So if there's someone you call frequently and you'd like to save them in the phone, here are a few different ways to do that. Go to the phone app in the bottom left corner, tap on keypad and type in the phone number that you want to save. Afterward, tap on the plus in the upper right corner and tap create new contact. Now, the first thing you'll see is a pop up at the top here and it's going to say uh, save the contacts to save them to your Google Gmail. The reason you do this is because if you ever lose your phone or your phone is damaged and you can't get into it, it'll back up a copy of all your contacts in the cloud. And all you have to do is sign in on a new phone with the same Gmail account and all your contacts will automatically sync on the new phone. So make sure you always save them to your Gmail account. All we're going to do is simply type in the name Jim Jones. And then if we hit the drop down arrow in the bottom right corner, you can add additional information like an email, uh, a group. You can hit view more and you can add additional pieces of information like an address, notes, etc. And when you're done, you're going to tap on the save button in the bottom right corner. Now, if you would like to associate a picture with this contact, so when they call you, their picture comes up, you can tap on this picture icon at the top. You can then tap on gallery if you already have a picture of the person on the phone that you want to make their contact picture or you can tap on camera and then it will open up the camera and allow you to actually snap a picture to associate with that contact. So let's just use that as an example. I'm going to press OK. And now I can basically move this little bubble here to align how I want the picture to look. Hit done. And now every time I get a call from this phone number, this is the picture that will come up. Obviously, you would actually take a picture of the person, not a leaf. Um, but yeah, take a picture of the person, save it. And then that's what will come up whenever they text you or whenever they call you. Now, here's another way to save a contact as well. If someone sends you a text message. So right now we're in the text message screen. I can tap on this contact here and you see the phone number at the top. This means someone new has sent me a text message that is not saved in the phone. I'm going to tap on the phone number and then I'm going to tap on the little person with the plus icon underneath the phone number. And this will bring up the same menu that will allow you to save it in the phone. So these are just two different methods to save a phone number. Uh, to the phone. Next, let's go over how to change the notification sounds and the ringtone on the phone. So we're going to swipe down from the top of the screen in the upper right corner. Tap on the settings wheel. You're going to then go to sounds and vibrations. First, let's tap on ringtone. And all I have to do is tap on one of these other options to test out different ringtone options. So those are just a few options. If I want to change it to this, I've already selected it. I'm just going to hit the back button. And now that's going to be my new ringtone. And for notification sounds, I'm going to tap on notification sound. Now this is the sound for when you get a text message or an app alert. Right now it sounds like this. And some of you guys might be really uh, tired of hearing that. So Here's a couple of different options. So you can go through here and find the options that you like better. This is a very common one that people use. 
if, if I want to lock in this one as the new sound, I'm just going to hit the back button. Now, one last thing while we're in this setting here, you may want to turn on the vibrate while ringing uh, option. And this will make the phone vibrate whenever you get a call. Sometimes when your phone is in a bag or a purse, you don't always hear it ring. But if you enable this, your phone will also vibrate, which will help you to know if someone is calling you. Now, if you found those two tips helpful so far, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, I wanna show you this cool product that you guys might be interested in getting. This is actually a battery charger that is in the shape of a pager. So it's a super fun little product here. And there is a plug right here. You can uh, plug in your phone to charge. And there's also a full size USB as well. So you can charge not only your phone, but your Bluetooth headphones and your other uh, accessories. So this is a great thing. I carry this on me all the time. I'm actually able to charge my phone and I'm able to charge my iPad. It's that powerful. So I'll leave a link below in the description for this little guy here. It's a great little accessory that will keep your phone charged, especially if you wake up and you forgot to charge your phone. Next, I wanna go over how to change the screen brightness. Now, if you swipe down from the top of the screen, you do have a brightness slider right here, and some of you guys might have missed this. Now, out of the box, your phone is set to auto brightness, and so the screen is going to automatically increase or decrease the brightness depending on where you are to make sure you can see the phone. But sometimes, the phone can be a little too bright, and so in that case, where this little bar is, you wanna tap on the three dots to the right, and this will take you to the adaptive brightness. Now, this is what is normally turned on, and this is what will cause your brightness to fluctuate. So if you don't want the brightness to fluctuate, or if you say, hey, my screen is just too bright, I wish I could just control it on my own, well, turn this off, and now you can drag this bar up or down, and this will help you to control how bright the screen is, okay? And now I can just simply drag it from right here. Now, as a reminder, we just swipe down from the top of the screen and this bar, you can just drag up or down to manipulate how bright or how dim the screen is. For the sake of the video, I have it turned up all the way because that's the best way for you to see the screen, but you definitely won't need it that bright. Next, let's go over how to keep your screen on longer. You're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen Upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, tap on display, swipe up, and go to screen timeout. Now out of the box, your phone is normally gonna be set to either 15 or 30 seconds. And what that means is your screen is going to go off really quickly. So I would encourage you to change this to one minute or two minutes. And the way this works is your screen is going to stay on two minutes so you don't have to touch the screen so often for it to stay on. It'll stay on up to two minutes before it starts to go dim. So adjust this accordingly based on what works best for you. I found that two minutes is always a good uh, gauge of the screen being on without me having to touch the screen. Now, one quick note, if you found that your phone storage is already starting to run slow, I'd encourage you to get a memory card. Memory cards are really inexpensive and they can help to expand your storage so you can take more pictures and more videos. I'll have a link pop up on the screen of, of some memory card options here. And I'll also have a link up here to my video where I show you how to put in that memory card and how to adjust the settings appropriately to make sure your pictures and videos are saved onto the memory card. Next, let's go over how to use the alarm app. Swipe up on the main screen and go to the clock app. Now in the clock app, you'll find your alarms, stopwatch, and the timer, which I use these very frequently. So uh, let's start with the alarm. Uh, make sure you're on the alarm uh, toggle. You're gonna hit the plus right here. And here I can easily program a new alarm. So let's have this go off at 10 a.m. or some of you guys probably 6 a.m. 6 a.m and you can set what day of the week you want that alarm to go off. Now, if you don't set any day of the week, you just leave this blank, then it'll automatically default to going off tomorrow. Here I can name the alarm. You can say doctor's appointment.
hit save. And now I have an alarm set for tomorrow, 6 a.m. to go off for my doctor's appointment. So just a really easy way to set an alarm. You can always hit the plus and you can have multiple alarms. You can have 10, 15, 20, depending on what works best for you. You can also, let's tap on this one here. I can have this alarm go off on certain days of the week. So maybe you want this alarm to go off on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm just going to tap on those bubbles. And now this will be a reoccurring alarm that goes off uh, every week. And you can just tap here if you want to change the name of the alarm. Just hit the arrow right here to erase the name and you can name it something else. You also don't have to give it a name. That's up to you. This is the timer app. You can set, hey, I want to set a four hour timer. I tend to use this when I do laundry. I'll set a one hour timer and hit start. And I can hit a plus here to add another alarm at the same time. So you can also have maybe a shorter alarm if you want, or um, I can set this for two hours, three, four. You can have multiple alarms going at one time. And just that easy, you can have your alarm set. When you're all done, you can pause it or you can delete it. Moving on, I wanna go over um, how to use your Google Assistant. Now the Google Assistant is really cool because I just showed you how to manually program an alarm. But there's an easier way to do that, which is if I hold down on the home button for one second, just like this, your Google Assistant will automatically pop up. And all you have to do is tap on the microphone and just ask it to set the alarm for you, just like this. Set an alarm for 6 a.m. And there you go, just that easy. It set the alarm for us. And now I can hit view alarms and I can confirm that the alarm was set. I can also use this for timers. Set a one hour cook timer. And I can tap view timers to see that the timer was set. This is great for when you have something in the oven, you might be in the other room and guess what? You may not hear your oven timer go off, but you'll have that alarm on your phone that will also remind you when it's time to go check what you put in the oven. And you can use this for a bunch of other really cool things. You can also use this to set a calendar appointment as well. So watch this. Set a calendar appointment for August 30th at 8 a.m. to go to the doctor. Here you go. The title is here, the date, and the time and the duration. And all I have to do is hit create and that will lock in this timer, or excuse me, that'll lock in this calendar appointment. And I can tap on this open calendar button so I can see it show up on my calendar. I'm gonna press calendar just once. And guess what? This is my month calendar. And now I have my doctor's appointment set for the 30th. So this Google Assistant, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I just showed you a few of the most practical purposes you can use it with but you can do a lot of other cool things. You can ask it to find me a recipe for pesto penne pasta. Find me, um, when is the next baseball game for X team? You can ask it anything and it will basically do a Google search. If it's a command, it will do it on the phone. If it, you're asking it a question about general information, it will search the web to get you an answer. So that's a really useful feature and you definitely should be using that because it's gonna make life so much easier for you. Now, lastly, I want to go over something called widgets. These are really useful functions on the phone. And there's one specific widget that I think you will find very valuable. So let me show you how this works. We're going to hold down on the home screen. And when you hold down for one second, it's going to bring up these menu options at the bottom of the screen. And you want to tap on widgets. And here you'll find lots of really cool shortcuts that you can add to your home screen to give you additional information and also give you access to shortcuts to different functions on the phone. The Gmail function is one that I think is one of the most useful widgets to use. So uh, we're gonna swipe up until we get to Gmail and tap on this little arrow to the right. And this is the main widget for Gmail. 
So we're gonna uh, put our finger on this little widget here and just hold it for one second. And it's gonna take us to our home screen. Now I can drop this widget right on the main screen. Oh, but you know what? I don't have enough space. So I'm gonna swipe over one screen. Now this is also a widget, but I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna just hold down on it for one second. This pop-up will show and let's tap remove. Now we have plenty of space for this widget. I'm gonna hold down the screen, tap on widgets, and we have the Gmail one that's open here. I'm gonna just press and hold, and I'm gonna basically drag it onto the main screen and then let it go. And then you're gonna tap on primary, which is your main uh, inbox for email. And now you'll see these little dots in the four corners of the screen. If you put your finger on the dot and drag, you can expand how big the widget is. There's also a dot at the bottom. I'm gonna take my finger, put it on the dot and just drag down. And with this widget, it allows me to see all of my latest emails right from the home screen. So this is the main home screen. And when I swipe left, this is another page of the home screen. And now I can scroll up and I can look at all of my latest emails right from the home screen. This is a great way to stay up to date with your emails and not miss anything important. And if you see a, a really good email, simply tap on it and it'll open up the Gmail app and take you right to that email so you can read through it. So this is just one of many uh, widgets that are available. Just as a reminder, you press and hold on the home screen and then tap on widgets. And then as you swipe through, you'll see there's so many other cool widgets. So I would encourage you go through this menu and look at all the other widgets that are available and see if there's any others you would like to add to your screen. These make life so much easier. I have multiple um, email accounts on my phone, and so I use this widget a lot to keep track of different emails that are coming through different accounts. I'm gonna add a link up here to another really helpful video. This is my how to transfer data video. It's also my how to set up your A15 video. There's so many other great helpful tips in there that I think would be useful for you. In that video, I go over how to change the wallpaper on your app. I also go over how to delete apps and how to move apps on the screen. So after you watch this video, make sure you check out that video as well. I guarantee you'll learn some more helpful information. If you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below and leave me a comment and let me know what was the most helpful thing I covered in the video. And let me know if there's anything else you would like me to cover in the part three to this video, which I will make shortly after this video launches. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.